send it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Every, we were supposed to do it at the same time. You were late. Oh, okay. Three, two, one. Good, Good morning, morning everyone. <laughs> Lydia just said that was painful, and I would agree with her. Stop it. Let me start it. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We don't really have our um, act together today, but that's all right. It's Thursday, uh, March 9th. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can watch this uh, live every weekday morning right around 8 o'clock. You can watch it anytime later in the day on your news feed. You can find us on your Inform YouTube channel, your favorite podcast platform. Just go to inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute. Mm -hmm. We're all over the place. Yeah, just like the weather, kind of. All yeah. over the place. They have a break right now. It's kind of nice. It's not too bad. Lit, yeah, short break. Very short lived <laughs> break. A little bit of drifting snow up in northeastern North Dakota, causing a couple of slick spots. But like yesterday, um, any of those slick spots that do develop, most of them will be melting away because of the sun angle. I talked about that this morning on yeah. First News. Our same our sun angle today is 38 degrees in the skies. What that means is if you look in the sky, the sun is much higher, of course, at the peak. The peak, the solar noon is what we call it. It's when the sun is highest in the sky. Mm. With just the intensity of the sun angle, higher the sun angle, the more intense the sun. That's why you can get sunburn in summer. We can actually melt the snow without temperatures reaching to okay. 32 degrees because the sun angle is intense enough to warm up objects on the ground and we get that melting. Like yesterday, the roads were not good in the morning. By the afternoon, you hardly knew it snowed in the morning, for a lot of the main roads at least, because yeah. it all melted away. So, yeah, enjoy that sun angle today, but it's going to be cloudy. But luckily, we can still get some of that melting through the clouds just because of how intense the sun is. Not right. a lot. We'll probably get a little bit. You know, some wet roadways. The spots have been wet. Puddles have been forming. They'll unfreeze, unthaw again today with temperatures upper 20s, low 30s. Yeah. So a nicer day, a quieter day before we track snow moving in about midday, mid-afternoon, depending where you are. So we'll start off quiet. And then up to the north, you probably won't get much snow at all. That moves on through a couple of inches for most of us, not significant, but it's mm -hmm. quiet for now. And then as we go into tomorrow, that is the quiet day. We can dig out our two <laughs> inches of snow before we watch a bigger system that we're going to get kind of head hit head on. It's kind of looking like Saturday into Sunday. Ugh. So quiet for now for much of the day, but we'll have snow flurries moving in by the afternoon. Depending on where you are, if you're up to the north, you probably won't see anything until later tonight. But All right. Nothing significant, pretty much north of Hillsboro. It's east-west, was it 200? Highway 200 around that area, I think, maybe? I have no idea. Uh, is it? It is. Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> I knew it. I, Lydia's in my ear all morning. I knew Highway 200 was one of those roads up there. And yes, that is um, pretty much the line from one to two inches to trace to one inch up to the north of that. So. All right. Yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, more snow this weekend. And it's March. <laughs> Hopefully the and real spring gets here soon enough. What is well, this, like third winter? Or is this I don't winter? know. This is a lot. What is this? This is just <laughs> yeah, too right. much snow. It's just too much snow. <laughs> it's just too much. It's a lot. I agree. I agree with that. I'm sick of it. But it is North Dakota in March. And this yeah. is what March is in North Dakota. It happens. Two years ago, Lydia's talking about this. 65 degrees. 65, 65. degrees. Ugh. You don't like 65 degrees? No, today. It's making me go, ugh. Oh. About today. Yeah. 65 would be great. Would be. Wouldn't that be that. awesome? Maybe we'll get that in April. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, maybe by the end of the month. So far away. Maybe Fingers by July. Crossed. Maybe by July. <laughs> maybe by July. Then you guys will be complaining it's too hot. Too. I won't. I never, never complain ever. it's too oh. hot. Okay. No. I'll hold you to that. My mom's watching. She wears like blankets in Las Vegas when it's like 100 degrees. And she's she's like, one cold. of those always cold people. And she's, yeah. she lives in South Dakota. Yeah. So she likes blankets. And That's bold. Socks That's bold. Heated blankets and all that. Yeah, She's not alone. There are a lot of people like that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah. Let's jump into yeah. some of our morning news headlines now. This morning, right now, a Crookston mom who was nearly murdered by her own son admits there are a lot of people to thank for saving her life. This is a story, of course, that we've been following for mm -hmm. you here on WDAY. New information, though, this morning. 52-year-old uh, Angie Gonzalez was stabbed nearly a dozen times by her son last Friday. Uh, police told us that he had gotten mad when she said she was moving to a new home. Uh, we told you right away she thanked police officers, doctors, and nurses, but now she's saying two people she really wants to, to say thank you to. One, her neighbor, Joel Schwartz. He is actually the one who called 911 after hearing her scream. He had just moved into the neighborhood, um, and actually, an interesting twist too, he's actually the new pastor at the church that Gonzalez attends. Mm -hmm. She had just met him for the first time on Sunday before the attack. Um, Angie also believes that her faith in God was the main reason she survived as well. So mm -hmm. pretty amazing hearing from her and hearing from the pastor as well as mm -hmm. to what he thinks about her faith and, and how 
um, her faith played a role in her survival. We know right now she has moved from the hospital to the rehab center and expected to go home fairly soon. So pretty yeah. incredible after being stabbed a dozen times. Yeah, good for her for being able to make a recovery, obviously. Right. All right, uh, North Dakota's former Deputy Attorney General is accused of threatening a child at a hotel pool in Mandan. 46-year-old Troy Seibel is facing a charge of disorderly conduct this morning. Court records show a warrant for his arrest was issued last week, and then yesterday he made a promise to appear in court on March 21st. Court documents show last month Seibel told police that he made that threat after a child threw a football into a hot tub that he was sitting in. Investigators say Seibel was drunk and refused to leave the hot tub when he was asked to by the hotel staff. He also refused to tell police his name until he was put in a patrol car. Continue tracking that story for you, of course, uh, getting a lot of buzz. Today, a former teacher and coach at Valley City High School who was accused of sending nude photos to students will be in court for a pre-trial hearing. This is a story we've been following for you as well. 65-year-old Davy Zink is facing charges of luring a minor by computer and attempted solicitation of a minor. According to the police report that was filed in court, Zink uh, added a 14-year-old student on Snapchat back in 2019. Uh, according to that report, he sent that girl some inappropriate pictures of private areas. Police later interviewed another student who also told them that Zink had sent them inappropriate photos as well. All right, lawmakers in North Dakota are looking to extend their time in office. A new proposal would set new term limits for elected officials overriding restrictions that voters already approved last fall. Last year, 63% of voters approved a new eight-year maximum for those serving in the state house and state senate, something this new proposal is seeking to change. Lawmakers are lobbying to increase the term limits to 12 years and for those who serve to be eligible to run again after a four-year break. The committee overseeing this proposal gave it a due pass recommendation and a house vote will likely come sometime next week. Students at UND are now voicing their opinions on the president's student loan forgiveness plan. While that proposed relief plan sounds like maybe a dream come true for students, the policy is actually getting pretty mixed reviews, at least on UND's campus. Students are suggesting a more targeted approach to the plan, saying that all debt is not equal and that we should take into account the various fields of professionals. One student says $20,000 in debt as a software engineer is insignificant, but $10,000 in debt would be significant for maybe a local school teacher. Uh, UND President Andrew Armica said that he is also hearing some mixed reactions. Right now he says students have been questioning the fairness of the mm -hmm. policy. Yeah, I think a lot of people are debating whether that's fair or not. So we'll see where that goes. It's uh, currently being reviewed, I believe, by mm -hmm. the Supreme Court. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, on the national scale, there's a new war of words at the debate over the origins of COVID-19. A former CDC director is now taking aim at Dr. Anthony Fauci. ABC reported this morning that COVID was just one subject of a couple that came up during a hearing on the U.S. national security and threats it's facing. The other big subject was social media and the White House has recently backed legislation introduced uh, on Tuesday by a dozen senators to give President Joe Biden's administration new powers to ban TikTok and other foreign-based technologies if they do pose national security threats. And we're starting off some more basketball coverage, North mm -hmm. Dakota State High School basketball coverage this weekend. It's the Boys and Girls Class A basketball. We're going to be bringing you some live action on our channels. The quarter, girls' quarterfinals games start at 1 this afternoon on WDAY Extra. I do know that's Cheyenne Mustangs are okay. going to be playing in that game at 1 o'clock. Uh, the boys' quarterfinals at 2 on WDAY 2. Tomorrow, we're going to have the semifinal coverage of both the girls and boys basketball here, here on WDAY. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday, WDAY will be airing both championships. The girls' championship game will be on Saturday and 8 o'clock for the boys' game. Yes, it'll be exciting to see them all play and compete. And, of course, Dom Izzo, I'm sure, is going to be talking all about all the high school basketball this morning on Hot Mike, which is from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra, as well as Inforum. And remember, you can get a great deal right now on your Inform.com subscription. 99 cents a month mm -hmm. for the first three months. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to check out that deal. Yeah, take advantage of it. You can get lots of great local content, sports, weather, local headlines, all that good stuff. Remember, we're going to keep you updated throughout our newscast today as well, starting at 11. We're going to have one at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And then join us again for First News tomorrow morning from 5 to 7. We'll give you updates on any road conditions you need to know about with that new snow coming in. Also, I believe we're going to take a look at uh, the newest flood outlook 
as well. Yes, so we'll break that down, especially with all this snow. A lot of people are asking about it. So tune in tomorrow morning. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.